right, thank you, Chris. Woo, can you believe it? This is the New Year's Eve service, and I want to just thank you guys so much for coming out this weekend. Hey, just by show of hands or make some noise, if you went to one of our Christmas services this past Christmas, that was amazing. Thank you guys so much for coming out to that, and a big mahalo to everyone who was a part of it, who served. Thank you for giving of your time and your talents to just create a service that was fit for our king and for everyone who was just there to celebrate and worship together. We say this every year, but I think that was our best Christmas service we've done. I know I said that last Christmas too, but I would say it every Christmas because it just gets better and better. And I pray that you all had a blessed Christmas, and it's so great to see you this weekend as we talk about our theme going into 2024. For the past years, God has been giving us a, a, a theme, a vision for the year. And so we're going to talk about last year's and then go into the new year. But before we look ahead to where we are going, we have to pause to look back on where we've been and where we've come from Otherwise, we might end up like a funny story I heard this past week about a couple who forgot about their life-changing encounter. Okay, so there was an elderly uh, man and a woman, Kupuna, who were living in the plaza, let's just say. And uh, the, the man's name was Bob. And Bob was a widow. And the woman's name was Sue. And she was a widower. And they just kind of became friends and got to know each other over the years. And uh, one evening, they were having a, a Christmas dinner, community dinner in the activity center, and Bob and Sue just so happened to be sat at the same table. And so they were having a lovely evening together, and Bob kept shooting Sue these admiring glances before he finally worked up the courage to pop the question. He said, Sue, I've been thinking about this for some time now. Will you marry me? And Sue just beamed, smiling, and she said, oh, Bob, and you know, after six seconds of careful consideration, she said, yes, I will. I will marry you. And the evening ended, and they, they went back to their rooms, but the next day, Bob woke up in a panic because he couldn't remember the night before. He said, oh, no, I know I asked Sue to marry him, but I can't remember if she said yes or if she said no. Did she say yes or did she say no? And he was just freaking out. He, he didn't have the faintest memory, so finally he worked up the courage and he gave her a, a call. And he said, Sue, last night was amazing. I had such a wonderful evening. And after much trepidation, he, he finally worked up the courage to say, and I know I asked you to marry me last night, but I can't remember if you said yes or no. And to his relief, Sue said, oh, I said yes. I said yes, and I meant it with all of my heart, Bob. And I'm so glad you called me this morning because I could not remember who had asked me the question. <laughs> so you see, we, we don't want to forget. We don't want to forget. It's important to remember because a lot of important and amazing things happened this past year. And I believe that God is setting us up for the next 25 years where we will experience tremendous transformation, not only here, but in the surrounding communities as well. And so I got to be honest with you guys, Saturday night service did not do very well with our pop quiz. Eight o'clock, one person remembered. And I'm going to ask you the question. So I'm praying that 10 a.m., you guys are up and awake and you guys will remember who remembers what our theme for 2023 was? It was? Heaven. Whoa, that was the biggest response we got all weekend. Give yourselves a hand. You guys were the loudest by far. Yes, our theme for 2023 was heaven. Now, heaven's a very broad category. So what's specifically about heaven? Uh, we're talking about heaven within the context of Matthew chapter 6. So take a look at this passage. It's very familiar. Many of you know it. It's the Lord's Prayer. And Jesus is teaching his disciples not just how to pray, but really how to live, how to live their lives and what to contend for in their lives. And so it's not just giving God lip service, but it's, Lord, this is how we want to live our lives. This is what we want to be about. Many of you are familiar with the Lord's Prayer. Uh, you probably memorized it growing up. But let's all read this together, the first part of the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6. Let's read it together. Ready? Go. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is profound because what Jesus is telling us is that the promise of heaven, the reality of heaven, is not just a future promise, but a present reality. Heaven doesn't just have to be something we look forward to someday, although it is certainly that. Jesus is saying you ought to not only desire, but contend for the reality of heaven on earth now, in the here and now. So we can contend for and experience the reality of heaven, not just as a future promise, but as something we can experience today. And we spent the entire year learning about the church's purpose and mission to essentially heavenize the world. That is to contend for the reality of heaven in every part of our lives. And that was such a God revelation. This past year, God downloaded so much about the scope of our mission to heavenize the entire world. And I got to say, so much amazing fruit came from this past year's meditation. We are experiencing God's presence and the miraculous at an unprecedented level. We are hearing countless testimonies of people who are coming into worship or coming into the Lord's presence, being set free, families being restored, spiritual growth off the charts. But how many of you would say that we are just getting started? Amen? That there is more yet to come. In fact, our slogan, one of our slogans that we want for 2024 is turn to your neighbor and say, in 2024, we want more. <laughs> Amen. How many of us know God is the God of more? Amen. So as amazing as 2023 was, there's still more. As much of God as you think you know or have experienced, let me tell you, you're just scratching the tip of the iceberg. Because God is infinite, and there is so much more to him that we have yet to experience. So in 2024, we want more. Hallelujah. And like I was saying, especially in the latter half of this past year, we began to notice a pretty significant shift in that there were just a pattern began to emerge Testimonies began coming forth every single week as people, different ones, were encountering the Lord in and through the church. So, for example, we, we had this one young brother in the Lord who never really stepped foot in a church before in his life. And God got a hold of him uh, while he was Uber driving, no less. You guys remember the story of Michael? He said, very first time coming to church ever, came into worship, came into the sanctuary, worship is happening. Never been to church a day in his life, and he just gets hit by the presence of God, comes completely undone, begins weeping uncontrollably, having this God encounter. There was another brother uh, who brought his entire family to church for the very first time. He said, Pastor Mark, from the moment I stepped out of my car and my foot set, you know, ground on the parking lot, I felt the presence of God, and I knew we were home. This was our church home in the parking lot. Another young girl said that she came to service and uh, very first time, and her takeaway, her observation at the end of service, she said was, Pastor Mark, I just feel like the Holy Spirit is just free to do as he pleases here, that you guys are not tied to a, a program or a production, but you guys are really about his presence. And you know, all these stories they really speak to our highest value as a church. Our highest value here at New Hope Central Oahu is to be a church where God shows up. Because without his presence, it's really not going to amount to very much. As wonderful as the music and the message is, if God is not in it, nothing will come from it. Sure, you may leave knowing a couple more things about the Bible, and that's great. You may leave feeling some sort of emotional high, but the shelf life on those things is pretty limited, whereas the transformation you experience because of what the Holy Spirit is doing in your life will last forever. We want to be about transformation, not just education, not just inspiration, but transformation. And when you're a church that's about transformation, you need God because no person on earth has the ability to change a heart. Only the Holy Spirit can change a life. And so we need for God to show up. And he has been showing up. In fact, um, 
it was happening so regularly and so frequently that people began testifying to this that I began to put my thinking cap on and I began to ask myself, what's going on here? I mean, yes, this is what we contend for, and yes, this is what we pray for, but there just all of a sudden seemed to be this like breakthrough that happened in the latter half of this year. In fact, how many of you by show of hands would say, and you don't have to if, you, if it didn't happen, but how many of you could confidently say that at some point attending a service here at New Hope Central Wahoo, you have encountered undeniably the presence of God in one of the services? Would you say amen to that, that you have felt the Lord's presence, you have encountered him, Right? And that's wonderful because that's what we contend for, but I got to let you in on a little secret, okay? This place here, this space where we have been encountering God's presence undeniably, it was an administration office for Wahiawa General Hospital many years ago. And more recently than that, do you guys remember what this was right before we came in? It was a what? Autoplex, yeah. It wasn't a church. I don't know if that changes anything for you. This wasn't originally, like if you look at the original drafts for this space, it wasn't a church. So why are we encountering God's presence here? We are the church. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of us know the address is nothing special? The brick, the mortar, this, this was admin space. It was an autoplex. If you look around, I love that we're here. I mean, our neighbors are a, well, to put it gently, a convenient store. We'll just say that. A little too convenient to get some things, if you ask me. But hey, we're praying, you know, believing for this whole block, you know. Across the street, we got a tattoo parlor. You know, we got all kinds of wonderful people, you know, who live around also, you know. And we welcome them into our services. All that to say is that there's nothing unique or special about this address, and yet many of us can testify that we have encountered God here, and for some of us, on a regular basis. But it has nothing to do with the address. It has nothing to do with the space. I want you to catch this, church. This was an office at one point, but here's the amazing promise about that, is that if we can encounter God here, we can encounter God anywhere. If we can experience an open heaven in this space then that means anywhere is possible. Your home can be an open heaven for an encounter with God. Your school can be an open heaven, right? Because this was an autoplex at one point. Don't come here thinking this was a special place. This was an autoplex. It's just a building, but it's what happens in the building. Amen? We've been praising. We've been contending. We've been, been worshiping God, and what's been happening is His presence has just been saturating this place so that it has become an open heaven. Heaven invades earth in this space. Remember our meditation. Remember our prayer this past year on earth as it is in heaven. We have been experiencing the reality of heaven in this space, but it's not the space. You see, that can happen anywhere, and that's what God's been showing us. What we contended for here. We are contending for everywhere that the entire world would become a hot spot for an open heaven encounter with Jesus. And I believe that you would contend for that wherever you go. Now, conversely, and don't raise your hand for this one, but how many of us have also had the opposite experience where we come to church and the presence of God is here and hope is rising only to get in the car, drive home and just feel like, where did it go? <laughs> you know, it's just almost like all the air got let out of your balloon. And let's be real, for some of us, it's not even Monday. It's like Sunday evening. You know, it just feels like, wow, did I step out of the, is this a dead zone for the spirit? Like, what is going on? You know, on Sunday in service, I just felt like, yeah, hope is alive, you know? And then all of a sudden, it's like, man, what's going on? And so what's going on there as well? And as we we're thinking about this, we we're thinking, man, it's so awesome that we come together on Sunday and experience this open heaven, but why limit it to just Sunday? right? 
Why limit it to just Sunday? In 2024, I'm going after Monday. Who's with me? I want the same presence, same promise, same praise, praises on Sunday. I want all that on Monday too. I don't want it just once a week for a couple of hours. I want it all week long. And so uh, I want to share a, a little meditation that I think will help to shape our vision going into the new year. And it comes from the Greek understanding of the word for baptism. <clears throat> Our understanding for baptism comes from two Greek words. The first is bapto. You can see the similarity. This is where we get baptism from. And the second is baptizo. Okay? Now you can see that they're very similar. Two Greek verbs, similar, but there is one key difference that makes them worlds apart. So first of all, let's look at the Greek word bapto. And the Greek word bapto means to dip, to dip in, or to immerse. Now, bapto is only found in Scripture three times. Three times. One is in John chapter 13, where Jesus is having the Last Supper with his disciples. And Jesus answered... It is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have baptized it, dipped it in the dish. Think the bread that you get at CPK, you know, when they give you that little oil, the vinegar oil, you know, think that. It's just like a dip, right? But you don't want to like, you don't want to drop it in there, you know what I mean? Because it's like, oh no, now it's like soggy, you know? It's just a quick dip. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon, Iscariot. And this is how he was letting the disciples know which one of them was going to betray him. But that word for dip is the word bapto. It is an immersing, but it is only temporary, right? It's a quick dip. Now, on the other hand, let's look at the word baptizo. Baptizo is similar in that it is an immersing, but it's a little more involved. You see, it's a repeated immersing. In other words, a better word is actually submerging, okay? Submerging. Think of a sunken ship sitting on the bottom of the ocean floor, right? That thing's not taking a dip. That thing is there. That's its new home, okay? To cleanse by dipping or submerging, to wash, to make clean with water, to wash oneself, or this is a good word, to overwhelm, right? And now, here's the, key, here's the thing we need to catch, church. The word bapto is only found three times in Scripture. The word baptizo is found 63 times in Scripture. And that is the principle that informs our idea of baptism, water baptism, and baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the message is loud and clear. What Jesus is trying to tell us, church, is that the Christian life was never meant to be a quick dip. It was never meant to be a test of water with your toe, kind of just immerse a little bit of it in. No, the Christian life was meant to be a submersion. Our entire lives submerged in Jesus, cleansed by his presence, overwhelmed by his glory, and, and just remaining in him, staying submerged in him, not just on Sunday, but all week long, we are just submerged in his presence, being cleansed, being washed, being immersed, being overwhelmed by his glory. So in 2024, we want to go from bapto Christianity to baptizo Christianity, because that is where the Christian life really is. To help us understand it, there was a Greek a physician and a Greek poet named Nicander. And we have a bunch of Nicander's writings. In fact, here's a, an example, right? Nicander was a poet. Nicander was a physician. But the interesting thing about Nicander is that he was also a pickler. Nicander was into pickling things. Anybody pickle things? Yeah? No? Any Korean people? Kimchi? That's pickling. Come on. That's a form of pickling, right? Kimchi. Sauerkraut, that's all, the, it's, it's all the same concept, right? But the, the thing is, Nicander leaves behind a recipe in Greek for pickling. And the, the profound thing about this recipe and the, the useful thing to us is that in this recipe, Nicander uses both Greek words for baptism. He says this, In order to make a pickle, 
the vegetable should first be bapto, dipped into boiling water, then baptizo, submerged, baptized in the vinegar solution. So you see, both steps involve immersing the vegetable, but the first is temporary. The second act of baptizo, baptizing the vegetable, that's what produces the permanent change. Do you see that, church? When you or I eat a pickle, what do you taste? Do you taste cucumber? No. In fact, we don't even call it a cucumber anymore. Why? Because it is an entirely new thing. When you eat a pickle, you don't say, wow, this is a tangy cucumber. You say, no, you say, that is a good pickle, if you like pickles. The same thing goes for kimchi. When you eat kimchi, you don't say, oh, that's spicy cabbage. You don't even call it cabbage anymore. Why? Because it's not cabbage anymore. It has been immersed so long that it has become an entirely new thing. It is now kimchi, arguably a far superior thing to cabbage, in my opinion, right? And the same thing goes for us. You see, if we only bapto, if we only dip into the Christian life from time to time, how many of us know we might get a little flavor on us, but we will remain relatively unchanged. We need a pickle in Jesus, folks. We need to stay submerged in him, submerged in him. We need to baptizo ourselves in Jesus and stay immersed and submerged in him until we are completely overwhelmed, cleansed and overwhelmed by his presence so that when people bump into us, they'll say, whoa, whoa. You are not a cucumber anymore. There's none of you left. What's that I smell? What's that I taste? And you can say, that's Jesus. That's Jesus because I've been just immersed in him. I've been baptizo in him. I've just been soaking in him. And so you see, this goes beyond just a weakened expression. We need to stay immersed in Jesus, baptizo in Jesus all day long, all week long, how many of you are ready to be completely baptized, submerged, and overwhelmed by God's Spirit in the new year? Amen? How many of you will say in 2024, I want more? Hallelujah. So this coming year, and really every year after, we will com continue to be about our commission, to continue to be about our mission as God's people to heavenize the entire world. That will be our calling until Jesus returns. But this is going to be our meditation for 2024, that we abide in Jesus. Because without this key principle, everything else that we do will be relatively useless. We will be fruitless in our attempts to heavenize the world. And this theme really comes from John chapter 15. In John chapter 15, there's a little bit of a conundrum going on because Jesus is in the upper room with his disciples, and it's a bittersweet moment because things are about to change drastically. This is the Last Supper, and things from this moment on are never going to be the same. But not in the way that you might think, because the story doesn't end here, but it drastically changes. Up until this point in the upper room for the Last Supper, Jesus' disciples have spent the last three years doing life with Jesus. They've been with Jesus, they've become like Jesus, and they've even started to do the things that Jesus does, like healing people and, you know, cleansing unclean spirits and stuff. But now they get to the upper room, and Jesus makes a bombshell revelation. He tells them things are about to change in a really big way. I'm leaving. I'm going back to the Father. I say, well, I mean... That's not such a big deal, Jesus. We'll just go with you. No, you see, where I'm going, you can't follow yet. You need to remain. But here's the kicker. You're going to continue to be with me, become like me, and do the things that I've been doing. Wait, Jesus, <laughs> didn't you just say you're leaving? Yeah, but you're going to continue to be with me, become like me, and do the things I've been doing. How? You're leaving, and you said we can't go with you. Yeah, things are changing, but they're not ending. You see, because I'm going to go, but actually another is going to come in my place. 
And when I leave, things are going to go to a whole nother level. Things are going to get even better. In fact, Jesus says these very words, even greater things will you do. How is that possible? It's because the same spirit and the same presence that empowered Jesus to transform lives, to heal the sick, and even to raise the dead was now going to remain and fill the lives of all of his believers. And it's in this context that we get this passage in John chapter 15. In John chapter 15, verse 5, now knowing that Jesus is leaving, right? This is in the context of him leaving. He says this, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Now in the New uh, International Version, right, same verse, he puts it this way. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So you see, Jesus is saying, I'm ascending back to the Father, but that doesn't change the fact that you must remain in me. You have to continue to do life with me. You have to continue to become like me. And you have to continue to do the things I do. But Jesus, you're leaving. How can we do that? Through the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit. You have to remain in the Spirit That spirit will cause you to continue to become like Jesus, and that spirit will empower you to do the things that Jesus did. But if you live life outside of his spirit, if you do not remain in him, if you do not abide in him, your life will be fruitless. Your best attempts to live for Jesus will be utterly fruitless apart from him. And that's why we want to continue to live for the purpose of heavenizing our world. But folks, We will not be able to do that if we do not learn how to remain in him, abide in him 24-7, 365. That word abide means to remain. It is to wait on him with a patient, enduring expectation that he will show up in your life. To abide is where we get the word abode. And that's a word we don't say anymore. That's kind of a a strange word you don't hear anymore. But your abode is where you live. It's your house. It's your place of residence. Now, when you think of your house, you don't think, oh, yeah, that's the place I visit. No, that's the place you live. That's where you do life. That's where you remain. Jesus is saying, make your abode. Make your home in me. Don't just visit from time to time. Remain. Do life with me. Again, it's this idea of dipping versus submerging and baptizo our lives in Jesus. And so our theme for 2024 is abide. We want to abide with Jesus all year long. We're going to take a deep dive on what it looks like to abide in Jesus. Listen, the capital C church has gotten great at the Sunday expression we are so good at two hours once a week. We, we've nailed it. We have hit that out of the park. If you go on YouTube, you'll see some of the best expressions of Sunday morning worship you could ever find. Auditoriums packed to the gills with people singing and worshiping and, you know, just going nuts. Laser, fog machine, it's just like crazy. It's like a Taylor Swift concert up in there. It's amazing, and it's packed out, you know. And the messages are phenomenal. If you go on YouTube, you can find the best messages you've ever heard. We have nailed two hours on Sunday. But is, all, is that all that we want to give to Jesus? Just a couple of hours every Sunday? Man, how many of us want Monday as well? Amen? How many of us want Tuesday, right? I'm not content to give Jesus two hours on Sunday anymore. I want to give him my Monday as well. I want to stay baptizoed in Jesus all week long because it's as we remain in him. That's where the fruit comes from. I don't even have to ask. I know you want 2024 to be a fruitful year, don't you? You want to see fruit in your marriages. You want to see fruit in your families. You want to see fruit in your children. You want to see fruit in your businesses. You want to see fruit in everything you set your hands to. But listen, that's only going to happen as we remain 
in Jesus, as we stay tight with him all year long, and you watch as we abide in him, you will see fruit this year unlike ever before, because that is where life comes from. And so throughout this year, one of the ways that we're going to make this very practical is as the year goes on, we are going to highlight different powerful tools that believers have been doing for centuries. They're called spiritual practices. And the purpose of spiritual practices is not so that you can try to earn your way to Jesus, not so that you can try to, you know, suffer so that you can say, God, look how much I'm doing for you. You know, I'm fasting all this stuff. Notice me, God. It's not that, right? The purpose of spiritual practices like fasting is to clear space in your life so that you can do this, so that you can remain with Jesus, so that you can abide with him. Because let's be honest, there are so many things, and increasingly so, in our life that will pull us out of our time of abiding, that will pull us out of our time of remaining, that will sever our connection with Jesus and call it, cause us to simply dip in and then dip out. I don't know about you, but I don't want to live a hokey pokey Christian life where I put my right foot in, you know, and then I take my right foot out, right? Put my left foot in and kind of shake it all about, right? Don't do the hokey pokey with Jesus. Dive in both feet, head first, all in, submerged, cleansed, and overwhelmed by his presence this year, and you will experience fruit like you've never experienced before. This is where the Christian life is found, church. It's in the constant abiding. And so the first practice that we are going to go through together as a church begins tomorrow. Tomorrow is day one. Every year, we embark on a 40-day journey of fasting. And like Brother Chris said, man, pray about that thing that takes you out of his presence. Pray about that thing that just distracts you from abiding in him. And let's just consecrate the first 40 days of our life. The first 40 days of our life. Think of it as a tithe, if you will. Let's tie the first 40 days of our life to him, and you watch how God will set a firm foundation for the rest of your year, man. We have seen supernatural signs and wonders and miracles come forth because of these first 40 days that we consecrate to the Lord. So that QR code will lead you to some teaching about how to approach fasting. You can go even deeper, you know. Um, I love every 40 days, I, uh, my wife and I, we always fast something we have uh, termed recreational media. That's always our 40-day fast. She added coffee. I'm like, sister, you're on your own on that one. <laughs> coffee doesn't take me away from Jesus. It, it brings me in to the glory, okay? So I need that. But you want to do coffee, all on, that's you, right? And that's the thing. You discern what you're going to do. But for us, automatic, first 40 days, we are fasting all forms of recreational media. So any form of media that is entertaining is out for the first 40 days. Social media, Facebook, Instagram, Netflix, movies, streaming. Believe me, we're getting it all in now. But tomorrow, starting day one tomorrow, it's gone. Don't DM me. I will not respond. You want to text me, you can text me. You want to email me, you can email me. Those are not recreational. Though I need that for work, okay? But any form of entertainment that is purely recreational, gone for 40 days. And let me tell you, sometimes... It's hard to go back because when you are just like cleansed, media cleansed for 40 days, it's like, man, let's not go back. But then we always do. But then, you know, then we do it again later, right? We, we do it again and it's great. But we need that, right? And I, I'm telling you, tremendous fruit comes from these first 40 days. Hey, we've got Joseph and Leslie Lee coming back to church in a couple of weeks, right? So don't miss church next week or the week after. Uh, because next week we're kicking off a brand new series, and the week after, the Lees are coming. And if you've never seen the Lees before, they have an amazing, they're from New Zealand, and they have an amazing ministry of, of miracles and healings. We've seen tremendous healings break forth. But you know, last time Joseph Lee was here, he said uh, to the pastor, he said, you know, there's such an ease. I would try to do a New Zealand accent, but I'll just end up butchering it. You know, Pastor Mike, there's such an ease at which your people just break in to the, to the Holy Spirit. And there's just miracles that break forth here. I don't know. That's a little Australian, maybe. That might have been Australian there towards the end. But he said there's such an ease with which the supernatural breaks forth. 
And then we said, well, I mean, we do fast every year. He's like, that's it. He said, there's only one other place that I go to where there's just such an ease for the miracles to break forth. And it's because we fast and we pray and we consecrate these 40 days of Jesus. And the, the fruit and the fruit of the seeds that are sown in those 40 days just stay the last all year long. So start the year off right. 40 days of prayer and fasting. Join us. We're going to do this together. And then another thing, day one tomorrow is our abide devotional. And so, you know, oftentimes when you fast from things... You, you know, you want to fill that time with something else, right? Prayer is great. Another is the word. You know, if you're fasting from social media, fill it with time in God's word. Every time you're tempted to pick up your phone, pick up the word instead and join us for this 21-day devotional. Now, as Chris said, it's 150 spaces and it's filling up quick. So scan that QR code because you want to get into that. But even if you, it gets maxed out and you don't join the 150, don't let that stop you from doing it. I mean, you can still do it. In fact, get your family together or get a group of friends together and do it together. The cool thing about the, the YouVersion app is that it has a forum feature where after you do your devotional, you can leave a little like comment like, hey, brothers, sisters, this is what I got this morning. Or hey, you know, I'm really struggling with this devotional in my life. This is the thing that I need prayer for. And other people can chime in. It's super interactive, super community-based. We all just start the year together, and it's amazing to be in God's Word together. But with every one of these spiritual practices, whether it be fasting, whether it be the Word, we'll talk about Sabbath later in the year, the heart behind every spiritual practice is to be with Jesus, to become like Jesus, and to do the things that he did. Amen? And as we do that, as we abide in him, you just watch the fruit that will come forth. So this morning, as we close, I'm so excited about our meditation. I'm so excited about the vision for 2024. I believe we're going to see um, over the next years just not just transformation on an individual level, not just transformation on a family level, but I'm truly believing over 25 plus years, we will experience transformation on a community level. And that's what we're believing for. The same open heaven we experience here every weekend, we're going to experience on a city level. Can you imagine that? If people cross city lines and feel like, whoa, I just entered into something. There's like an open heaven here. You know what I mean? This, this town is different. This city is different. There's something going on here, right? It's kind of like when you drive into Laie. It's like, something's going on here. It's like, why are all the businesses closed? It's Sunday. You know, it's like something's going on over there. And, and you know, that same phenomenon can happen anywhere. I'm believing that Wahiwa, Mililani, Haleiwa, these are going to be the first Christian cities in the state, in the nation of America, right? That when people think about these cities, right? I mean, let's be honest. When you think of Salt Lake, that's what you think. Oh, yeah, that's a Mormon city. <laughs> you know what I mean? Salt Lake City, Utah. Hey, how come they get a city? When do the Christians get a city? This is our city. This is God's city. And we're going to contend for open heaven in central Oahu, 2024 and beyond. Because listen, 2024, church, we're going to celebrate our 25th anniversary as a church. This Easter marks 25 years of New Hope Central Oahu. Would you give God a, ha a hand for that? We're going to celebrate that. And we are going to, we are working hard to tell the story. It's going to be an amazing video that's just going to tell the story of these past 25 years. You know, for 25 years, man, there's just been such faithfulness, you know. 25 years really marks the run that my dad had as lead pastor of this church. 25 years. And God has done amazing things under his leadership. And, and God has just set us up for a very exciting 25 years to come. I'm so excited. And somewhere around the 20-year mark, I'm going to start looking around thinking, all right, who's next? In fact, I'm already kind of doing it. Maybe one of these kids up here. Coco, you want to be the lead pastor one day? No. She said no. Hey, I said no too. And look what happened to me. <laughs> But 25 years, amen. You know, there's some people here who are here from day one, year one. We had the Holdrens. Danette Holdren was here. Man, she's like a 20-plus year person. Alvarico's are here. Maybe 25, <laughs> close to 25 years, right? 25, right? 
all 25. He was here from year one. The Alvaricos, Auntie Susan have been here since year one. We have people on our team who've been with us 20 plus years. Some of you 10, 15 years. Man, thank you guys so much for being faithful, not to a church, but to what God is doing in our communities. Thank you. And if you're new to the church, welcome. This year, we're in for an amazing celebration of God's faithfulness. You're going to hear the story at Easter of what God has done these 25 years and where God is bringing us in the next 25 years. And let me tell you, it is exciting. The future is bright. And so I'm excited. But with that said, would you all stand together with me this morning as we close in a word of prayer? This is it, church. These are the final moments of 2023. And we are preparing to ring in a new year. Hallelujah. So exciting. Lord Jesus, we come before you this morning. And God, at the end of 2023, we worship you. We honor you. We glorify you. We want to end this year the way we began it, and that is praising your name, God. Lord, you have done far exceedingly more than we could have asked or imagined this year. We thank you for the breakthroughs. We thank you for the miracles. We thank you for the transformation. And yet we know that the best is yet to come. 2024, Holy Spirit, we want more. More, Jesus. And we thank you that you are the God of more. So we're excited for what you have in store. Hallelujah. And Lord, this morning, God, you say, you said to your followers, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. My burden is easy and my yoke is light. Take it upon you. So you see, as we approach 2024, we don't need to strive. We don't need to work. We don't need to stress. We don't need to get all worked up and anxious. Jesus just says, come to me. Hey, maybe some of you are here. 2023 has left you with a couple of bumps and bruises along the way. Jesus says, come unto me. If you're tired, if you're weary, if you're anxious, if you're stressed, if you're worried, come to me because I want to give you my life, my yoke. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let me take the worries of this world from you and let me give you my peace that suppresses understanding. Hey, let me take your anxiety and your stresses and let me give you my joy. Let me give you the life that you were always intended to have. You don't need to strive for it. You don't need to work. You just need to remain in me. Rest in me. Abide in me. Make your home in me. Stay with me. And you watch the fruit that will come this year because you are connected to the source of life. Lord, I pray that over every single person here this morning. I pray that over every single one of our homes. I pray that over every family. I pray that over every marriage, Father God, that we would welcome the new year praising you and running headlong into your presence, into the arms of Jesus. Hallelujah. So Lord, we thank you for all that you have in store. As we sang, Lord, our hindsight tells us that you are the God of more and that the best is yet to come. Hallelujah. So we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you as we go into this new year. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Hallelujah.